Welcome to Supporter Report's first video special report. Uh, we are here two days after the transportation referendum failed in Metro Atlanta with two of Atlanta's most important leaders. We have Doug Hooker, who is the executive director of the Atlanta Regional Commission. It was members of the Atlanta Regional Commission that put together the, the uh, project list that people voted on on Tuesday. And we also have Dr. Beverly Scott, who is the general manager of MARTA. Um, MARTA has been an institution in our region since 1971, and it is our number one largest uh, transit system. And Beverly's been here for five years trying to uh, get MARTA um, to a point where the community in the region is welcome to having more transit in our region. And we are joined by my colleague, David Pendred, uh, who is a, a regular writer with Supporter Report. And we're just going to have a conversation about where do we go from here? What can we do as a region to move forward, given the uh, pretty dramatic loss that occurred um, on Tuesday? Um, and in terms of going forward, where do we go from here? I think it's a question we're going to all be pondering for a while. Some of my earliest thoughts are, or earlier thoughts, if you will, are that there, there are kind of two tracks I think we're going to have to explore. One track is given our, our future of tightening resources, we know there are going to be cutbacks in federal support and, and transportation, as well as the dwindling effect of the state gas tax. We have to be even more collaborative with the planning partners on which projects can we best get out of the money? What's the most relief we can get out of the money that we have available to us? Um, knowing that none of it's going to really move the needle at, in any great way, but, but we have to try to do incrementally what we can with what we have. Um, and then the second track, I think, is that we're going to have to be in a deeper a richer, if you will, conversation with the citizens of the region. Obviously, whether it was process, whether it was the environment, whether it's the economy, whether it was the list, there are a whole host of reasons for which people did not feel they could support it. But I think people will still agree that there is a major problem with transportation and, and not having done something about it. And until we get that conversation with them in a way that says, what do you feel we can do collectively that you're willing to support? I mean, I don't think we'll be able to ever revisit something like this, whether it's a referendum or whether it's some other mechanism. But if we're going to ever try to address the situation at some point in time down the road, we're going to have to have a much deeper, broader conversation with all kinds of sectors of the community to understand what collectively will people support. That's my sense. Yeah. You know, uh, Doug, I, I very much agree. Um, many times it takes multiple steps before. I mean, it was even the experience here with Marta. It takes a couple of times, and it's unfortunate, and we wish we didn't have to, but um, it's not uncommon And before you have success that you have to do it. I, I call it, um, you know, you get knocked down two times, you get up three, okay? If there were ever a time to be brutally honest, constructively so, Will we really step back and with everything, this did not fail for lack of money in a campaign, okay? And to spend and take the resources that are necessary to really, really honestly try to understand, and I think this deeper, robust, really listening and talking to people is very, very important to understand um, what, what, what were the various factors at play? Because I think there's certain things that I haven't heard anybody say that Folks still do not appreciate how important the issue is, okay, and how important our getting some solutions to the traffic and the transportation issues are. And clearly, um, the longer we wait to do it, the more it's going to wind up costing for us to do it. So figuring out the what were the different and how do we wind up coming back, okay. So I think it's a, I think it's a, a, a massive conversation, a dialogue of of, of what do we where do we really want to be in the future? That is a regional conversation, as well as one from a state perspective. And the sooner we get about the business of doing strategic thinking around that before fire ready aim and trying to get that formula right, I think um, 
I think that'll be that'll serve us all well moving forward. Mm -hmm. I think that you both have brought up a crucial topic that we haven't really framed, I think, in any of the public dialogue so far, which is the idea of the regional conversation. Mm -hmm. And we saw that unfold through the meetings here at the ARC headquarters at the round table, where people could come forward and express their ideas about the particular topics on the table for that meeting. And then through the different uh, wireside chats, they were able to come forward and talk. But I wonder if you could describe a little bit more about how the structure could be created to further the unified conversation that I hear you both saying that the region needs in order to have a constructive conversation. Yeah. One of the things that I said fairly frequently as I was speaking to different groups leading up to the vote was that we are, in my estimation, a teenagers as a region. We haven't grown up to think of ourselves as a region yet. There are a lot of other places around the country that have been in a regional relationship for decades, if not hundreds of years longer. And therefore, even though they have different local government jurisdictions, they still understand that so much of what they are is tied together as a region. It's a fairly new concept for us in Metro Atlanta. It's only, I think, in the last 20, 30 years uh, particularly in the last 10 to 20 years, where a lot of our physical dynamics on the ground are such that we are required to do more regional thinking to solve issues. And this was our first major effort to have to do that because of the deadlines that the, the law imposed upon us. And having a referendum, a direct vote of the people, which is democracy at its rawest, purest, um, is a very unusual kind of thing for, for Georgia, period. I mean, some states, obviously California, are much more used to making major policy decisions in that fashion. And so I think there's a lot more in their community mechanisms and orientation set up to have conversations leading up to that kind of a larger vote. That's a very unusual thing for us. We've never done it. Will we do it again? I don't know. But certainly our uh, the nature of our, our existence as a region will not go away. The nature of our challenges as a region will not go away. And so I think we will have to find more grassroots ways of having conversations about what's important, what people are willing to accept, and the methods by which they want to go about tackling our solutions. Because whether you live in Cherokee or whether you live in Clayton, you may not identify because you go home to a different address, but the fact of the matter is, when you go around 285, you're all stuck in the same traffic. When you come down the connector, you're stuck in the same traffic. And we're all using it. And there's no way of resolving those kinds of issues unless people in Cherokee and Clayton and Rockdale and Douglas and all points in between can agree on some solutions for approaching those. Yeah. And a lot of the conversation, though, that we're hearing is congestion mitigation or getting rid of traffic. It's and it, So am I hearing you all correctly? That's too narrow. Uh, a scope for what we need to do. Oh, absolutely. I think so. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I think absolutely. And and yeah. you and, and we, but when you have the conversation, you begin to appreciate the fact that yes, I'm not taking anything away from congestion, but let's face it, guys, that's only one out of five trips. Okay, mm -hmm. and so particularly when you then add to it the fact that the aging population, what are we saying, the 25 percent in another 15 to 20 years are going to be 65 years and older. Mm -hmm. Those are very different types of trips. Having right. that kind of conversation that begins, so then people start saying, gee, yeah, we really have to have all the connective tissue, okay, mm -hmm. which it's not just transit, it's it's paid, it's access, it's da da da, it's the local community circulation systems and all of that. That's the kind of rich stuff and a lot of those don't take big dollars, okay, in the big scheme of things. But that connective tissue that makes it complete is absolutely critical. And that's what comes out of the broader conversation. We're going to take a short break, uh, come back, and we'll be talking about some specific steps that we can take as a region uh, to solve some of our transportation issues. Welcome to Supporter Report. Thank you so much for stopping by the site. This is a place that I hope you'll find some of the best writers in Atlanta, giving you the latest information of what's going on in our city, in our region, in our state. We have been around since February 2009. It keeps growing with new writers and new features. We'd love for you to be part of it. Join in the conversation, post comments, let us know how we're doing. Thank you so much for being part of it. 
I'm Maria Supporta. Welcome again to Supporta Reports Special Video Edition, a conversation with Beverly Scott and Doug Hooker uh, about where do we go from here from a transportation uh, perspective. Um, let me ask specifically a couple of tangible questions. One, is there anything we can do with the MARTA Act? Can we go back to the voters in Clayton County or Gwinnett or Cobb and see if they want to join the MARTA system? Is that uh, an, uh, is that a legal option? I don't know about the political and practical option. Oh, it certainly is. My isn't. understanding of the MARTA Act is that is a legal option on the Absolutely. table now that those counties can, by a referendum process, Absolutely. choose to join um, with Absolutely. the existing MARTA Absolutely. counties. And it would have to be a full penny as opposed to a half penny. It would have to be the, a full the, penny. My as understanding it's is the law requires it to be a full penny, mm -hmm. yes. What are some other options? Are we looking at, could uh, Fulton County or DeKalb County pass a transportation SPLOST just in their own counties to do projects just in those counties? Uh, you have to go to the state to ask permission for any of those, right? Certainly, certainly. Um, and obviously those are options, whether those um, elected leaders want to, to do that obviously is something we'll just have to wait to see if they're interested in. Um, one of the things that was interesting when we were looking at the numbers is that it appears that that uh, a large segment of the city of Atlanta's population voted yes. It was a 59, 41%. Right. And okay. so if this were a city referendum, not a metro referendum, right. the city constituents would have said, yes, let's do more to invest in, in, in our community. One reason I wanted to have the conversation with the two of you is you two are basically very optimistic folks. You tend to look at cups as being <laughs> half full. And, but can you tell me from the bottom of your heart, how painful or difficult was Tuesday's vote? And, and how do we get out of, out of the doldrums in terms of our own emotional psyche um, and, and the fact that this didn't pass and we have to start back to square one again? In, in all honesty, it was extremely disappointing, and I'd be uh, less than honest if I didn't say Wednesday I was doing a lot of reflecting. In fact, I made a point of spending a lot of time with myself on taking the day off just so I could spend a lot of time reflecting and allow a lot of the emotions to kind of roll through me and process. But now having said that, a big part of my optimism not only comes from my nature as a person, but from my observation of the history of this region. We have historically been an optimistic region and despite all of our feuds and our tensions that ebb and flow, we still have been an optimistic um, region by and large. And so I do believe we'll go forward. I do believe we will eventually find some solutions. It may not be one solution as this was proposing, one giant solution. It may be more many steps, but we'll find a way forward because I think overwhelmingly we're a region of a lot of good people, smart people who do want to solve the problem. It's just that the form that it was being given to them and the time that it was being given to them was not the way they were willing to accept. We'll find a way that they will be willing to accept. Beverly? I agree with that. I, I, uh, How did you feel? Let me tell you, I felt like, the, I, felt, I felt very badly and it wasn't because I was just focusing on the referendum, okay? I was basically looking at uh, five years of the journey and um, saying to myself, and, and there have been some critical points at which I really honestly had wished that there had been different decision making. Um, and I think that after a while, because I do look at these things as no matter what the environment, you kind of start out knowing that probably 25 to 30 percent of the folks aren't going to vote for any kind of an increase to begin with. So I think that we took a lot of unnecessary little cuts on ourselves, um, differential treatment of MARTA throughout the I mean, this is not, this is a combination of things. And I think that we did some combinations of things that quite candidly, um, all together, um, and we got to own it, because we all did it, okay, um, made this be, uh, come up to be something at the end of the day that we just um, couldn't overcome. And I think we need to be able to be very candid and very frank with ourselves about what that combination of things are in order to be able to help to get to the next place. But I am absolutely an optimist. Um, I believe anything that you care enough about is worth fighting for. Like I said, you get knocked down two times, you get up three, okay? And 
this is a, it is a wonderful region. Um, we still stay a little bit juxtaposed, if you will, between the heights of the civil rights movement and a little bit of the civil war we're still running, and I'm a very frank person, okay? But um, this, is a, this, is, this is a place where um, these are great people, and there's been a lot of progress, and this is not the time to give up. And so I got, I got faith. We do have to move forward one way or another. I really do appreciate you taking time, especially at this, uh, you know, I call it the hangover period, um, <laughs> to come and talk uh, to us and, and our viewers uh, and followers of Supporter Report. I'm Maria Supporter. Thank you for joining us today.